Chapter 25 of Among the Meadow People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Savannah Alday. Among the Meadow People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. Chapter 25 The Mosquito Tries to Teach His Neighbors. In this meadow, as in every other meadow since the world began, there were some people who were always tired of the way things were, and thought that if the world were only different, they would be perfectly happy. One of these discontented ones was a certain mosquito, a fellow with a whining voice and disagreeable manners. He had very little patience with people who were not like him, and thought that the world would be a much pleasanter place if all insects had been made mosquitoes. What is the use of spiders and dragonflies and beetles and butterflies? He would say fretfully. A mosquito is worth more than any of them. You can just see how unreasonable he was. Of course, mosquitoes and flies do help keep the air pure and sweet, but that is no reason why they should set themselves up above the other insects. Do not the bees carry pollen from one flower to another, and so help the plants raise their seed babies? And who would not miss the bright, happy butterflies with the work of making the world beautiful? But this mosquito never thought of those things, and he said to himself, Well, if they cannot all be mosquitoes, they can at least try to live like them, and I think I will call them together and talk it over. So he sent word all around, and his friends and neighbors gathered to hear what he had to say. In the first place, he remarked, it is unfortunate that you are not mosquitoes, but since you are not, one must make the best of it. There are some things, however, which you might learn from us fortunate creatures who are. For instance, notice the excellent habit of the mosquitoes in the matter of laying eggs. Three or four hundred of the eggs are fastened together and left floating on a pond, in such a way that when the babies break their shells, they go head first into the water. Then they... Do you think I would do that if I could? interrupted a motherly old grasshopper. I fix it so my children would drown the minute they came out of the egg? No, indeed! And she hurried angrily away, followed by several other loving mothers. But they don't drown! exclaimed the mosquito in surprise. They don't if they're mosquitoes, replied the ant. But I am thankful to say my children are land babies and not water babies. Well, I won't say anything more about that, but I must speak of your voices, which are certainly too heavy and loud to be pleasant. I should think you might speak and sing more softly, even if you have no pockets on your wings like mine. I flutter my wings, and the air strikes these pockets and makes my sweet voice. Hm! exclaimed a bee. It is a very poor place for pockets, and a very poor use to make of them. Every bee knows that pockets are handiest on the hind legs, and should be used for carrying pollen to the babies at home. My pocket is behind, said a spider, and my whip silk is kept there. I can live without a pocket. Some of the metal people were getting angry, so the garter snake, who had always rather laugh than quarrel, glided forward and said, My friends and neighbors, our speaker here has been so kind as to tell us how the mosquitoes do a great many things and to try to teach us their way. It seems to me that we might repay some of his kindness by showing him our ways and seeing that he learns by practice. I would ask the spiders to take him with them and show him how to spin a web. Then the bees could teach him how to build comb, and the tree frog how to croak, and the earthworms how to burrow, and the caterpillars how to spin a cocoon. Each of us will do something for him. Perhaps the measuring one will teach him to walk as the worms of his family do. I understand he does that very well. Here everybody laughed, remembering the joke played on the caterpillars, and the snake stopped speaking. The mosquito did not dare refuse to be taught, and so he was taken from one place to another, and told exactly how to do everything that he could not possibly do, until he felt so very meek and humble that he was willing the meadow people should be busy and happy in their own way. End of chapter 25 Recording by Savannah Alday